Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. <laughs> well, that's just a demonstration that I'm not going to be on the heavenly choir. I think I should just stick to biblical studies and teaching. I just felt I really wanted to do just to praise the Lord in this opening and I'm I'm super excited to share another piece of the puzzle in terms of fractals that are coming to to the fore. In the last couple of videos um, we've been looking it into fractals, uh, what I believe to be a uh, another fractal comprising of 21 weeks that are described in a fair amount of detail in these last two in this part one part two and then uh, in this video here we get into some some interesting uh, digging into the the history um, of events uh, between Joshua and Jesus and we find that there's a fractal of three sets of 490 years with some of the events lining up uh, with the pattern that we see so uh, we today is the 9th of july and it's almost 10 o'clock here in the evening uh, nice and quiet everybody's sleeping all the animals chickens are sleeping and nice and <laughs> so it's a pretty good time to do a recording and i want to share with you another fractal um after this last video one of these after i think it was this uh, a video yeah part two one of the one of my brothers in the forum uh, asked the question and said well what about you know isn't there, is there a 21 a day or 22 day fractal is is there a day fractal you know we we've seen um let me just get a, a chart for you in this uh in these videos what we we've seen is that we've got a a 21 or tw let's call it a, a 21,000 here fractal uh, and we, we 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 see that in the creation story we see that in this end time story there's a there's a 21 years uh, fractal where the patterns follow this the, the same sort of um the events of the 21 thousand year fractal we see the similar patterns reoccurring in the 21 year fractal and then uh, in these last couple of videos we looked at the possibility of a a 21 week fractal which would be the 21 weeks uh, from just after Passover to the beginning of tribulation, three sets of seven weeks. So we see that in a, in a seven week count from just after Passover to uh, the feast of, of wheat, first fruits of wheat, with another seven week count to the feast, first fruits of, of the grape harvest, and another seven week count to the first fruits of the olive uh, harvest or the oil harvest and that uh, lining up with the beginning of, uh, on, on the Feast of Trumpets. So so what I want to be talking about in this video this evening is the possibility of a 21 day uh, fractal. This, when I, when, when uh, one, one of the brothers, uh, I think it was Herman, that asked me um, what about this 21 days? You know, is there a 21 day fractal? And I said, I don't think so. Um, I haven't seen anything like any and he said well what about the three weeks of daniel's fasting we see in in daniel 10 um how he fasted for three weeks and and then on the 24th day of the first month uh he, the lord appeared to him so those those 21 weeks was 21 those three weeks the 21 days must have been the first 21 days of the first month uh, so I thought, well, let's have a look at that. And when we go and look at the, the 20, first 21 days uh, of, of uh, the first month, we see exactly the same pattern. Um, the pattern that we're typically seeing is a beginning. Uh, then it's followed by a, a, a three sets of seven, either 
in this case in the first case thousands of years or in this case three sets of seven years and in this case here yeah, three sets of seven weeks and um, in the case of the first few first 21 days of the first month we see a beginning the beginning of the year and then three sets of seven days uh, to bring us through to the 22nd day which will be the the last sabbath uh, the sabbath just after the completion of the feast of unleavened bread and the sabbath uh, prior to the feast of first fruits so the feast of first fruits again that that word being uh, um, the word in hebrew rashith which is the h7 uh, 7225 if i recall if we just go zoom in there yeah 7225 feast of first fruits is the same word as uh, rashith h7225 that's used in as the word in the beginning in genesis 1 in the beginning h7225 so we see this this pattern always has a beginning um and uh, so i thought it was actually i thought it was appropriate we've got a beginning of the year and then we've got the three sets of seven so when we have a look at these events and and we we see that in the 21 days we we see hang on but there's uh, there's something that happens here on the 10th day and then on the 14th day uh, is the crucifixion the 16th day the resurrection and uh, then the seven days of unleavened bread with the seventh day of unleavened bread being a significant um it's it's a it's a um uh being a solemn uh, being a solemn assembly on that day so i thought well let me i've been sitting on it for a while it was a few uh, probably two two weeks ago so i can't recall um that um, herman suggested that we should maybe look into that and so it's been sitting in the back of my mind and and three days ago i decided to to put it on the chart and let's see if we can see some some patterns yeah, so so that's what I really just want to share with you guys um, is what are the what are some of these and there are definitely some interesting things lining up. Uh, so I'm not going to make this is not going to be a very long video. This is just uh, a quick one just to show you how this 21 days could actually be yet another a fractal of events. So if we were looking at the 21 days, um, let me just zoom out a bit. These 21 days that we're talking about, which was the uh, which would be the 21 days. Uh, around the time of the the Passover, the crucifixion and, and, and death and resurrection of Jesus, we see that that is a, is a fractal that really occurred, these events occurred at the end of the 4,000 years, at the beginning of the, of the next 2,000 years that we've just lived through, and we now come to the end of those 2,000 years. So let me just zoom in here a bit. So Jesus arrives at the end of 4,000 years, beginning of this 5,000, around that mark. So this is a fractal of, of time uh, that uh, these events occurred. Um, these events would have occurred here on the 1,000 year chart. Okay, so so that's just what I'm just trying the, but I've expanded it so that again, we can just see how the pattern uh, fits in with the rest of the, the pattern of the fractals. Just want to recap a little bit again. We know uh, why are we making such a big thing of, of of these fractals, or why am I uh, why am I going down this route? Well, I believe that the Lord has built fractals into every part of His creation. Uh, in one of these videos, I think it was the first part um, of this video here. In part one, I, I actually go into quite a bit of detail on some real world fractals that we find in in everyday places around us so if we just take the time to have a look at it um i touch on one of the the fractals that occurs in nature so if we just recap on that um i covered the the fractal that we see here in a in a in a fern leaf for example um you know we see a fern leaf uh, the bigger leaf the bigger picture is is made up of smaller versions of itself so there's a there's multiple small versions of the bigger leaf and each one of these is made up of a small version of itself so there's this there's, there's a fractal pattern that we're seeing here um, you know the bigger 
is made up of multiples of its smaller and the smaller is made up of multiples of smaller leaves yet again and i did cover that in the last video here's another one yeah if you have a look carefully you see there's a cone there's a cone made up of small cones and each of these small cones is made up of small cones you see each each one of these is made up of small little cones so you got a three level fractal um, in this uh, aloe plant whatever uh, i think it's a, some sort of aloe plant um, so some of them are very easy to see and some of them are not so easy to see um, we see it in there's another picture of that that other one where you see there's a bigger cone made up of small cones made up of small cones um, just see if we can yes yeah we have a, a crystal where the crystal is made up of crystals which are made up of, of smaller crystals you know so again we see this three part fractal occurring sometimes there's more than what three parts i'm just saying there's really complex shapes here's another fern where you've got a there's a, a leaf made up of smaller versions of itself made up of smaller versions versions of itself um broccoli <laughs> you know when you go and see the a broccoli is uh, head the whole broccoli head is made up of smaller broccoli heads which are made up of small of of broccoli heads and each one of them have multiple broccoli heads so you know when you go and have a look at it from that perspective as something that's an everyday item and we just it's all over a, a branch is made up of branches which are made up of branches um, again it's a it's a fractal so we're all around us cells we've got um, there was another picture of, of uh, cells which are uh, let's just see I think there was one earlier yeah he has a these are like the cells within a leaf which are made up of cells within the leaf which are made up of cells within the leaf so yeah I think that's really just demonstrate the point that, that our Lord has built fractals into his uh, into his creation all around us there's literally thousands upon thousands of of fractals of all different forms recurring patterns fractals are really just recurring patterns and uh, so that's what we've really tried to to see yeah uh, you know um the, the one thing I've, I've found that over the years I'm, I'm pretty good at seeing patterns um there's uh, and and i've been seeing these these patterns and uh, so i just want to share them with you so that we can see perhaps uh, an understanding of these patterns can shed some light on uh, some of the detail of the events that we we're expecting so just to to go through some of those events if we look in the 21 year fractal we know that there's there was seven years of preparation of the bride we're expecting the scape of the bride to happen at the end of that, this this uh, first set of seven years then it's the time of seals which will be the time of mark and the time of the church that, uh, and which will end with the uh, the rapture the great multitude rapture and the visible appearance of mount zion um, at that time and then we've then we've got the final set of seven years which will be this time of trumpets which is the um, the time where the Lord turns back to the Jews, the rebuilding of the temple, uh, culminating in a what we've come to understand, and uh, and again, um, the as as uh, the Lord uh, perhaps paying the, uh, a price for the priests in the form of the bull. So we we see this. So that's the the twenty on year uh, pattern that we're seeing there. And uh, so what I went into last in the last couple of videos was just some of the possibilities. If we take this one event here, we may actually have a multiple uh, event occurring at this event. And I'm suggesting that the 21 week fractal might be actually showing us this. So these last 21 weeks just before the beginning of seals would be this fractal here of the same sort of pattern again comprising of uh, seven seven weeks leading up to what i believe happened uh, not visible to us but prob probably the end of the barley the main barley harvest we see that the, uh, a, a harvest comprises of three parts uh, there's the first fruits and uh, we saw it at the resurrection of jesus there was the he was the first fruits of those that are raised from the dead. Together with him, others were raised from the dead. Probably the the first fruits of the barley harvest that happened at the um, 
at the at, at the Easter resurrection. Um, so uh, then we've got the, over the last two thousand years we've got we've had the the collecting of the main barley harvest and now probably the resurrection of the main barley harvest and then there's the gleanings of the barley harvest which will which is still got to happen and probably be the Smyrna group the martyr group that will be there will be the gleanings of this first resurrection the barley's the barley group um, over this over these next seven years and maybe even into the 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 following seven years as well so the the, the 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 gleanings of the barley harvest to, to occur and then we've got the wheat harvest which is also going to begin now um, so this is the wheat harvest which will begin uh, at this point here and and maybe uh, we, we the the taking of the bride we understand that to be part of the wheat harvest is i believe that there's a group of of workers here that are that will remain to work that other than the Smyrna group um, that will remain to work that are also part of that uh, wheat harvest, the first fruits of the wheat harvest. And then we have the main harvest of the, the wheat harvest, the, the great multitude rapture at the end of that seven years, uh, which will occur at the end of the wheat harvest pattern. And then begins the grape harvest. Uh, and we, there uh, will be first fruits for the grape harvest, probably the, the, the 144,000 of Revelation 7 being a different group to this group that was first fruits over here and uh, then we've got the main harvest of the grapes during this time and then gleanings right at the end of trumpets of the the grape harvest so in these harvest patterns i think we've seen we this is something that probably has occurred not um to our not anything that we could see but that we that we've probably seen the completion of the main harvest of the barley the resurrection of the dead those that died in Christ over the last uh, 2,000 years. So, um, and now we're about to go into the beginning of the wheat harvest. So, if we start taking these patterns into um, into the day uh, uh, fractal, uh, this it's a little bit different uh, because we've got, as opposed to a crucifixion happening in the in the case of a thousand years, we've got this. Uh, we've got there was a cutting off at this uh, 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 point here, midway through this um, this this last seven thousand years, uh, with another possible one happening here at the end of the six thousand years, um, and I'm suggesting that this three week uh, um, this fractal of twenty one weeks might be showing us that there's yet a third. Uh, again, another again, two agains uh, over and above the original crucifixion of Jesus and uh, the reason why I say that is because we've come to understand that the in the Exodus story the, the striking of the rock um, that the water would flow is a type and shadow of the striking of Jesus we know that that occurred over in three instances there were the first instance uh, happened in the beginning of the Exodus story where the Lord told Moses to, to strike the rock and water would flow to to give water to the people and he did so and uh, so that was a type of Jesus' first um, striking, the, the death and resurrection of Jesus, from which, from that point in time, water flowed, spiritual water flowed, and uh, so we see that, that type of analogy. And then 40 years later, Moses was told uh, again to, to speak to the rock, and instead of speaking, he struck it, and that was at the end of 40, 40 years, and he struck the rock twice. So we've got two strikings there very close in succession and we saw how that that pattern reoccurs in 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 this in the, uh, possibly reoccurs in the in the in the in the um in the fractal story so we've got a striking here and then another two strikings here which we know one is the related to the witnesses at the end of trumpets but if if um, if my understanding is correct, then this uh, 21 week fractal story is pointing to another one, which happens here. So it's at the end of the 21 week fractal, which completes just before the beginning of uh, the seals, and uh, so that would be fitting in terms of two strikes, uh, relatively close to each other, uh, 14 roughly 13 years apart, and. Uh, as opposed with a with a big gap of two thousand years between the first one and the next two, very much like the picture 
of the, the Exodus story where we had the first one at the beginning of the 40 years and another two at the end of the 40 years. And here we've got 2,000 year gap, which is the equivalent of 40 jubilees. So there's definitely a, a picture to look at. And then we've seen, scripturally speaking, we see in, in Luke, in the Transfiguration story, the, 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 uh, Jesus is speaking to Moses and Elijah, and they speak about the, um, the decease that Jesus will, uh, will, will achieve uh, at, in Jerusalem. They speak about his death um, that, that, will be, uh, that will occur in Jerusalem, and that, that discussion is only mentioned in Luke. It's not mentioned in Mark and Matthew. Um, also in Revelations, we see in Revelation 5, we have the, the, the Lamb appears uh, before the throne um, as slain or like slain. So we've got again, and we know that, that Revelation 5 is an event that occurs just before seals, which is, um, you know, in this, time span, in this time slot over here, where he appears before the throne uh, uh, like as slain. Uh, so I think that's another uh, thing that points to it. And then more recently, in the last couple of weeks, I've just uh, come across a really excellent video on the the. the the atonement, um, the the offerings that were made on the um, on the day of atonement on the seventh day on the tenth day of the seventh month. This is this is a video I, would, I have shared it on the forum, and uh, those that are not on the forum that are listening to my videos, you definitely want to go and look this one up. And and this this guy ex really explains uh, is is um, uh, ex explains the the uh, the offerings at that were that were made at during, at the time of uh, the, on the day of atonement uh, I'm going to go into the scriptures a little bit but he really puts uh, explains it really well and if you come you'll come away with a clear picture on your mind that hang on hang on a second there's three offerings here there's there's three and there's so we've got let's go and have a look at the scriptures let's um I've got it open here. We have to go to Leviticus 16 for that. For the Leviticus 16 is is the Day of Atonement, and, and it's here that it describes what uh, what Aaron had to do and the priests had to do on the Day of Atonement. I'm not going to read it verbatim, but uh, what we see here is that Aaron had to take a, a bullock for a sin offering that would be for himself to his to, to, to atone for his own sins and he would take a ram as a burnt offering um, so and later on it goes and it's to take from the congregation uh, two kids of, of goats so two two goats two young goats as, as a sin offering and there's there's that same ram the, and the the ram so the, the ram and the goats come from the congregation the bull is provided for uh, out of the uh, the provisions of the of the priests so that would be for his own uh, the bullock is is yeah is, he used to offer he used to offer the bullock uh, of this uh, of the sin offering which is for himself so he atones for his own sins uh, before he can go into the the holy of holies before he can go um, and sprinkle the blood of of uh, well, the first step would be to, to he would kill the blood, he would kill the bullock, and the blood of the bullock would be, he would go and sprinkle that um, on on the altar for his own atonement. Okay, so that and and uh, and that so, so that that would atone for his own sins. And if he didn't do that, he'd be basically he, he would, if if he was guilty of sin, he would be struck dead, right there and there in the in the holy of holies. So he had to do that first. And then he would take the two goats, and they they would uh, they would place lots. They would choose the goats. One would be would be would be um, sacrificed for a sin offering for the congregation, and the other one would be uh, call, is is called the scapegoat. And uh, the scapegoat would be released, uh, but and the scapegoat. Uh, so after having. Uh, done the two the, the two sin offerings. It, it, it's actually interesting that this chapter doesn't this this section doesn't go into detail of when this ram for the for the burnt offering is done. That's that's a whole different offering. 
Um, we've covered the various offerings there uh, in detail before. There's five of them. There's two types of burnt offerings. There's the peace offering, and then there's two types of sin offering. There's the the sin offering for um, uh, for unintentional sin, and then there's the sin offering for trans uh, uh, for um, uh, for trespass, you know, or, or uh, in, uh, we're not necessarily intentional sin as such, but uh, it's become known that you've that's you, it's now a known sin and not an unintentional, unknown, or general sin. So the, yeah, the, the, but the burnt offering was 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 an offering made as a sweet savor unto the Lord. Um, the entire offering is made. It's an it, it, the, the entire uh, offer. It not, there's no partaking of this offering that go, that's offered up as a burnt offering unto the Lord. So um, yeah, so that would have been done at some point in time, but it does go into detail of the order of events in terms of the bullock and then the two goats and then the releasing of the scapegoat. And this video really explains it very nice. That so definitely watch that video. Uh, then yes, the in green is the detail. You bring the sin offering for himself and you go through all those various uh, processes uh, um, uh, and then followed by the goat. Uh, for the sin offering and then he would make uh, so that was for atonement for himself and his household uh, so it's, it's himself and the priest so this bullock here is not just for his own sin but it's atonement for himself and his household um, the priest and for all the congregation is it's the, the goat is for all the, the congregation okay that's covered in the sin offering in the detail of Leviticus 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 you can read the detail of those three types of offerings and then you shall lay his hands upon the head of the live goat and you'll confess over him all the iniquities of the, or that's all the, the the transgressions of the children of israel and um and uh, and you and you lay that on that goat and then they would lead the goat into the wilderness so essentially this goat is still it's not he's not this the the goat is not slaughtered and um as such at the tabernacle but Ultimately, this goat was led into the wilderness to die. Uh, this goat would be left in, 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 you must remember, this is in the seventh month. It's the beginning of winter. Uh, and uh, so there would be very little grazing. Ultimately, this goat would be taken out by uh, wild beasts. And um, that was the general event that happened to that goat. That goat would, would ultimately pay the price as well but in a in a much different way in 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 a way that's not necessarily at the hands of the people although it's interesting in the in this video um this guy the tabernacle man explains uh how it, later on in the time of uh, towards the end in the time in jerusalem for example they would take this goat and just remember this goat would want to keep coming back into into the camp keep coming back to um into the into into the village where they live or whatever um into jerusalem into the city and uh so they'd have to keep on chasing it away keep on um, chasing it away with sticks and stones and shouting and and eventually it became a lot easier apparently it seems like they actually would take it to uh, a cliff area and kind of push it off the edge of the cliff and that would sort the the goat out faster so it's uh, in their impatience they would they would actually ended up killing the goat anyway but not not by a way of slaughter by a different way so there's a story here of of rejection um, with regards to the scapegoat how the scapegoat is rejected ultimately to be uh, to rejected even unto death uh, and that's a very interesting story so what we've got here is we've got three offerings and uh, we've got the bull the goats that are offered at, as a sin offering the bull for the priests and we understand very clearly at ministry revealed when Alan has gone into that in quite a lot of detail we understand those two um, that's the you know the, the, the those two events but what we haven't come to understand more clearly is where does the scapegoat fit in and uh, when I started seeing this 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 pattern of three, and I said it, but the the first thing that came to mind was if there is yet another again, what would it be? And uh, it immediately came to mind that the, the scapegoat. We've never 
we never understood exactly where the scapegoat fits in. And we know that Jesus has said that this generation will will reject him. He's, he'll be here for 40 days, and during that that 40 days, he will be rejected. And that speaks of the exactly what happened to the scapegoat. He was chased out of the, led out of the village into the wilderness, chased out of the village with sticks and stones, and and cast out to and left to die. And in and later on, actually pushed off the end of a cliff. So there's there's definitely a, a, some sort of something happening here with regards to the possibly a scapegoat, which. Uh, the tabernacle man explains more detail is, re- is connected to guilt um, it's, it's a kind of guilt offering and um, if you there's another video here where he talks about the 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 guilt offering um, that's described in Leviticus 5 you can go and um, uh, watch that one as well so definitely a great teacher with regards to the different um, sacrifices and offerings that were made in those in those in those times according to the Leviticus uh, the instructions that are provided to us in Leviticus for the priests. So, um, yeah, so we've definitely got something going on. So there's a couple of scriptures that I've now mentioned that are kind of pointing to three events. Um, so enough on that. I'm not going to go into any more on that, but that came out of that pattern. And now I really want to just focus more on the 21 day story. So we know that from the beginning of the year on the 10th day, we know that that was the triumphal entry. That was the day that they had to select the lamb. Uh, they would inspect the lamb. They would keep it with them. And then on the 14th day, they would sacrifice. This is the, the Passover lamb would be sacrificed on the 14th day. And uh, so Jesus followed a similar event. He, we had the triumphal, triumphal entry on this 10th day of the, uh, of, the, of the first month. There was the inspection, all the events where they questioned him and tested him and 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 uh, so there was that uh, kind of that story of inspection ultimately to be betrayed and uh, uh, and, and and crucified on the 14th day we all know the story well the 15th day is, is in the grave and on this early in the 16th day which would be the third day he is he is resur- resurrected from the dead so uh, we've got the so we've got those main events um just before the crucifixion on the 14th day he would have had the last supper with with the 12 uh, uh disciples who later became the apostles less judas and uh, so that would have occurred over here and um and then after his resurrection we know that he on the 16th day well in the morning he sees mary magdalene and some of the other women and in, by the evening he meets, well during the day he meets with the two that are on their way to Am- uh, Aramaeus. And, um, and then he, later in that evening he, he also sees the ten. And he shows himself uh, and uh, that's all described in, in greater detail. Particularly in, in, the, chapter, in, in the book of John in uh, chapter t- uh, 20. So uh, uh, there is one other event that we need to also remember. Earlier on, we uh, we see that uh, he, uh, just before the triumphal entry on uh, on the sixth day, it says on the sixth day of the uh, oh sorry, rephrase. It says uh, in I think it's uh, uh, I think it's in Luke. Uh, the story is in Luke. He said six days before um, the Passover, he has a meal with uh, and and. Many of his disciples are there, and and Lazarus is specifically mentioned as being at that um, that dinner that they prepared for him, and that would have been so six days before would have been on on this uh, Sabbath day here on this eighth day of the first month would have been the day somewhere in this vicinity that he would have had a meal with uh, with Lazarus. Okay, so we know that the event occurred there, uh, and. Uh, and then that was followed a few days later by the triumphal entry. Okay, so those are the events. Now, the the question is, do, do, do some of these events maybe help us understand what we can expect? This is where we are at the moment. We're in the 10th week right now. We've just started the 10th week of the 21-week fractal to, that leads up to the beginning of, of, of or leads up to the, the, the 
to the Feast of Trumpets and we believe this year will be the beginning of tribulation. So this is where we are at the moment in this 10th week. Um, now, so, th so this will be in the fourth month. So it's interesting that in this 10th week, in this uh, which ends on the 8th or the 9th day of the 4th month, it was the, the ninth day of the 4th month that it's mentioned in, in both Jeremiah and uh, in 2 Kings that this is when the famine started and, uh, and Jerusalem was basically besieged and there was no bread in the city. It, it was all downhill from here to ultimately within those that month, that 30 days from there, from the ninth of the fourth month to the ninth, by the ninth of the fifth month, the temple was destroyed. So this was the the pressure period. These these four weeks over here, all starting as mentioned there on the ninth of the fourth month. The other interesting thing is that in Ezekiel chapter one, um, he sees um, the what I would like to call the mobile throne of the Lord. He sees he sees this this um, what he describes very similar to what John also saw as well. Uh, similar to what Daniel saw um, and, and it seemed to be like a mobile throne of some sort but he saw that on the fifth day of the fourth month so that's also in this week over here um, and then there's one other interesting thing if, if in this video that I, that I um, in this last video that I where I spoke where I, that I did on the hundred what the, the 1470 of fractal um, go to that fractal in this fractal here we saw there that there's there were three sets of of 490 years uh, starting there were well there were two actually there was uh, slightly out of sync by 100, 140 years but i just want to focus on the blue line yeah please watch that video for details on this uh, i'm not going to go into great detail yeah except to on this this blue this this one here the blue line the blue letter one really starts it's from from the end of um, uh, from the the beginning of Judges, which would have been the end of the time the the leadership of uh, Joshua, which we know is the type of Jesus, to the birth now of of Jesus. You see, it says minus seventy, but that's beginning. So this is the seventy year period. Each one of these blocks is a seventy year period. So that's the beginning of seventy. So the end of the seventy would have been uh, just a right at the turn you know from from bc to to ad so we know jesus was born on the on 2 2 bc and uh, so we see that there's a there's a fractal of three sets of 490 years between joshua and jesus um, on this blue line and what's very interesting here in when you go and plot all these um this is this bottom line here is the is the the years in on on the gregorian calendar in terms of bc dates and when these events, various events occurred, Samuel, King David came uh, in the first temple, um, would have been in that time slot. And so I go into detail of all these, how, how these were extracted from the biblical uh, chronology. Uh, not just uh, anybody's chronology. This is the chronology that the Lord provided for us in the Bible throughout, from Adam all the way to the end, a chronology that's derived exclusively uh, on the Bible, if you again, I, I, I say this in, in each one of these type of videos. If you haven't been, th if you haven't had a look at the these videos on the biblical biblical chronology, these four here, um, or these three, yeah, these four here from the Romance of Biblical Chronology parts one, two, three, and four, I go through this this. Um, the chronology that was discovered by uh, Reverend Martin Anstey in 19, early 1900s, he published a book, book called The Romance of Bible Chronology, and he discovered after many, many hours and years of, of, uh, of research uh, through the Bible, we, we now, we, we, from that point in time, we had a, a, a chronology from Adam to the time of Jesus, uh, entirely based on the on the on the biblical record, which is actually something marvelous to know, and 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 it corrects uh, all the other errors that are, are proliferant in 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 all the other types of uh, chronologies that various people use. So, with uh, with this chronology, we were able to to go and 
um, have a look at this this pattern and we found that th there was a uh, thousand four hundred and seventy years between those events from the end of of Joshua to to the birth of Christ and uh, we see these events um, in the chronology from the Bible they, they recorded. So the one I want to highlight here is right here, this one where we Elijah, the time of, uh, this was a time of, of Elijah and also Jezebel uh, in this time slot here. And we see that that was in the 10th uh, 70 year period. So each one of these blocks is 70. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So in this 10th uh, um, uh, period of 70 um, we have the story of Elijah and he would have been after you know that was in this time period that he was taken up um, uh, uh, similar to to the way um, Enoch was taken uh, he didn't taste of death so interesting that that would that would equate to um, that would equate to the 10th week this is this so this yeah again we see there's seven eight nine ten so exactly in the tenth where we are now we have the the elijah story lining up and then we've got the ezekiel story lining up with this and we've got the, the when the famine started here and we've got this lining up with a triumphal entry and uh, so now i want to go and so i suggested and i'm and again all of these things are just i'm just sharing with you guys um the the patterns that i'm seeing okay so I, i'm not saying this is this is not doctrine okay this is this is just observing and having recognized certain patterns and what i believe could be helping us to understand some of the coming events okay and i've suggested that we what i'm seeing is here that the 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 book of john which we know is 21 chapters uh, and it lines up with the 21 years uh, the 21 year fractal uh, that there's also a 21 week uh, 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 chapters to 20 to chapters to weeks so the chapters to 21 weeks there's so within in the chapters we see that there's uh, for example in chapter 20 which which is which is about the resurrection the death and resurrection and a uh, uh, story we see that lining up with all the agains um, right throughout and uh, so we see there's one there's in the 21 years and what i'm suggesting to be in the 21 weeks it's lining up and uh, so that's just something we need to 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 observe so there's you know and then in the days one um obviously this is now um it's 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 not lined up over there yeah the it's 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 it, the crucifixion happens over here but when you go and when you take this event this whole 21 day event it's right there in line with that okay so we're seeing that it's it's not too far it's all in line with this cutoff story um you know we've got a cutoff there we've got a we know that there's a cutting off a betrayal the cutting off here be here where the woman has to flee into the wilderness for three and a half years and then what i'm suggesting that there may be another cutoff story here in the middle of this in the 18th week uh, sometime during this uh, 40 day period the six weeks the 40 days where, Jesus, where the son of man will be here as a warning as Jonah was a warning uh, to none of us so the son of man will be a warning and in the midst we have the beginnings of some sort of betrayal that might actually occur over there culminating in another again the scapegoat remember whether there's a death or not I don't know um, but the, there's some scapegoat scapegoat event happening here i do believe okay whatever it however it turns out however it happens so, but remember luke the transfiguration story they did talk about he, he, the death that he would achieve and in, in jerusalem so anyway and then we have the the uh, as slain um, and maybe the as slain is just talking about not totally slain but there was something that happened okay in this in this time period here at the end of the 40 days so uh, so just going back into to john if we have a look at i haven't got all the chapters here but if we just have a look in 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 john chapter 8 we have the the story of the woman of adultery that's brought before the lord and he forgives her of his sins and she says and he says go go forth and sin no more 
and we see that that might actually this is kind of lining up with what I believe happened here with in terms of the resurrection of the the, the main harvest of the barley um, can't say for certain but we've also got this Lazarus the 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 meal with Lazarus here also in that time period interesting you know we know Lazarus was raised from the dead even though here the story is in the in the 11th chapter in the 11th chapter of John there's the story of uh, the Lazarus being raised from the dead we know uh, that there was a meal that story would have happened towards the before the 20, this uh, Passover week and um, but um, by just before Passover six days before Passover the Lord has a meal with Lazarus okay and they actually wanted to kill Lazarus again because of the, the, the effect that that re resurrection from the dead had on so many people that, that started believing in him. And, and the Pharisees and Sadducees wanted to kill Lazarus as well as, as Jesus because of that whole thing. Okay, so yeah, so we have the story of the adulterous woman in, in uh, John 8. John 9, we have um, the healing of a blind man that was blind from, from birth. Not sure exactly what that uh, relates to, but this one is very interesting. John 10, and that one I actually want to go and uh, uh, look at. Yeah, we have the open, yeah, he talks about entry. We've got the whole story of an entry. Let's just go and have a look at John 10, which I thought was very interesting. Now, um, so just right off the right in the beginning, it says, uh, The Lord says, or read little words, it's verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entered, entereth not by the door into the sheepfold but climbeth up by some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and they and, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee him, for they know not the voice of, of strangers. So we've got this entering in, the soul story of him, the, the shepherd entering through a portal, um, and him that comes up by another way is not the, 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 the shepherd, but, uh, but the thief. And we've got that, that's very, I just find it very interesting, that all comes in John 10, and, we, and it all lines up with the triumphal entry, and, um, and, and, so, and then later on we also get this thing where he talks about um, it is not written. Is it not written, the Lord, uh, uh, that I said, "Ye are gods, little g gods." If he calls them gods, uh, unto whom the word of the, of God came, and the Scripture cannot be broken. There was the whole story about you know uh, they they were upset with him because he called himself the Son of God, and uh, he just quoted some old uh, Old Testament um, um, scripture that basically uh, you know those that are to whom the word comes, those are anointed are called in the scriptures little gods you know so so yeah so what in this just i just found it interesting that that story lines up with this triumphal entry and this time where things start to happen elijah also the larger story there anyway so we'll see what happens um yeah then we've got the story of lazarus raised from the dead in the um in the 11th chapter of John then we've got the story in the 12th chapter of John the where um, Jesus' feet are anointed by Mary with oil he the Lord says I am the light of the world and there's a whole lot of things that happen in this uh, I'm not going to go into but this there's, there's a number of things that are spoken of in this particular chapter uh, chapter 13 is the Last Supper. Very interesting how this could be talking about, and we see how that also lines up with this Last Supper event just before the 14th day. So in the 13th week, which I believe is lined up with the 13th chapter in John, we've got the Last Supper, and that, that really lines up for me. That's, that's another one of these really strong highlights. Something's happening here about uh, some sort of Last Supper, some sort of meal happening over there then of course we've got the resurrection uh, so the crucifixion and and resurrection happening over a period of um, in this case it was uh, you know from let's call it a day and a half called two days but we've also got what uh, and then we, the time when he was in the grave 
which is also kind of lining up with this time where we believe we're going to be seeing um, the escape of the bride um, in this time slot here and uh, and a wedding week so we've got this time in the grave and and this time this wedding week uh, in this so this is the whole leaf that's just one day but you can see the pattern is is, is following so there's a there's a yeah he was away he was yeah crucified then away and then back again and it's kind of the same sort of story he's away and then back again for his 40 days so the 40 days starting at the end of this this what i believe to the 15th week and it's interesting that in this 15th week in john is talking about the branch and he's the branch and uh, or he's the vine and we are and we are the branches and the, you know we need to abide in him if you're going to produce fruit we need to abide and that whole story is it's, it's a it's really kind of related to to a joining um a joining event um interesting uh becoming one uh, almost like a yeah husband husband wife story there um so yeah um yeah then that in the next chapter we then in john it's talking about the coming persecution uh and the comforter that he will send so it's kind of pointing to that 40 day story where he starts preparing a, a group of disciples and teaching them and preparing them for, for what's coming in uh, in the 17th chapter again related to the 40 days he's praying over those that the father had given him he prays for he says they will you know they're going to remain in the world and he's you know that uh, and, he, and he prays over them in that whole beautiful prayer in in chapter 17 which is kind of relating to again this whole process of preparing um these disciples in the 18th chapter of john we have the betrayal which is kind of pointing to this cutting off again we got this uh, betrayal story uh, cut off and it's all lining up with that um, and then in the um the, okay, then this actual crucifixion in the in the in chapter 19 of john um crucifixion and then the resurrection in chapter 20 so which is so how long this is going to take in the in the third possibility probably over a, a few weeks and may not even culminate in an actual death but there may actually be an actual de a death as well so i don't know we'll, we'll leave it at that and then in the final chapter of john is where he commissions um his disciples really it's the the whole meal at galilee um and he is you know with this whole story where he says to peter feed my sheep feed my lambs and do you, you do you love me do you love me feed my sheep feed my lambs and then there's the 153 fish uh, that are pulled up in a net which is really uh, going uh, it's about a commissioning and that's in the 21st chapter of john uh, which is kind of pointing to this final commissioning just before he departs again at the end of his 40 days so yeah so that's um okay then we didn't mention there was also this uh, after his resurrection um we see this this meeting with two and then th the 10 later in that evening and i think it's it's kind of there's something happening here as well this is the very beginning of his uh, 40 days as well um yeah um, there's just uh, some things to consider as to as to how they all fit together but um it's probably a lot more that we could if we spend more time um getting into that um into those various patterns we might be able to glean so as 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 i sit right now i'm sitting on tender hooks um look, watching out for this this week in particular um to see if anything something may happen um certainly not uh, taking on the bride i'm not i'm not saying that the bride will will i'm, I'm fully uh, aware and I fully believe that the, the actual bridal taking event will happen at the end yeah in this 14th week 15th with the wedding being in this 15th week yeah in that time slot which of course is over here just before the time of seals so I'm I think that's where the main but there may well be something happening here in this 10th week and then a, a brief period leading up to in the next four weeks to the, the to the big event that we've been watching for yeah on the 12th of august which will be the 8th of the fifth month okay so we can just zoom in there so that's the 9th 8th 9th of the fifth month where we think that will happen yeah
yeah, this uh, Mount Zion event, which we see happening over here in the 21 year, we see Mount Zion coming and then the, the rapture, um, the, the great multitude that's, that's taken up. Uh, I think we're going to see this is another Mount Zion event, um, not visible. Um, this one will clearly be visible. This one will not be visible. This, I think, is related to Revelation 14, uh, where the 144,000 of Revelation 14 are standing on Mount Zion. Um, that's where I think that fits in. So, um, of course, because I believe that those are two different groups. The 144,000 that comes in here is not the same group as 144,000 that comes in here. Um, okay, but you can see there is a there is a similarity in the pattern, um, and it's got something to do with this last supper as well, um, possibly. Okay. No, I think that's that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Um, just a bit of a bit of fun uh, with fractals. Um, so we'll see. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens over the next couple of days and weeks. Uh, may God bless you and keep you. Until next time, God bless.